Hello friends and my dear students. So today's video is a continuation of the previous video only. That is, we will cover few of the important spots in this video and the side questions. I hope the last video you really like that video. You must have learned and it will be very useful for your exam. Uh, I request you before starting the video that if you really like any video, so kindly give the thumbs up and also write in the comment section so that there will be two way communication uh, between you and me. And it really motivate the person who is uh, giving the precious time for making this video. So it's a request to you. So now we start with the today's video. So the spot important spot so what is this if you can guess so this is robertson cooked meat broth so this basically we use as a transport media when you are transporting any anaerobic sample it is a condition for the anaerobic sample that it should not come in contact with oxygen so this is one of the important transport media they could be asked what is a transport media so transport media basically it is a media which maintains the viability of the organism now the another question, what can be another uh, transport media which can be used in place of RCM? So you can go for the thioglycolate broth. In the RCM, what is the thing which is making this uh, good uh, transport media for anaerobic sample? That is the, uh, these meat particles. So basically they are making an anaerobic, uh, anaerobic environment. Now this could be asked that uh, what are the other methods by which we can uh, <clears throat> maintain the anaerobiosis that is one is the Macintosh files method another is the gas pack so that could be then they can talk about if it is a grand viva they can go for the they uh, they can ask what are the anaerobic organisms like clostridium clostridium tetanae clostridium parfringes then there can be lots of question so when you are going for a grand viva so you have to pick the topics like if it is close if it is rcm they uh, more surely will go for clostridium so the topic should be prepared clostridium tetani uh, clostridium perfringens gas gangrene nagler's reaction so they all could be asked with rcm so that you have to be prepared for the exam they can ask about the anaerobiosis now we go to the next spot so this i think most of the student can identify this this is clad you can see uh, this media is very useful uh, to identify whether this is lactose fermenting bacteria or non lactose fermenting. So this is clad. Now the question is what is the full form of so first identify. So it is cystine, uh, cystine lactose electrolyte deficient medium. So uh, this is uh, for which sample it is being used. This is most preferably for the urine sample. Why we are choosing this special media for the urine sample? Why we are not going uh, for the other medias? Because it is a combination of like in most of the samples, we are going for two plates. One is the blood agar, one is the McConkie. So this clad is having the both the properties. Like it is supporting the growth of all the organism, which is uh, uh, like that of blood agar. That is all the organism can grow. And McConkey, what McConkey is doing, it is differentiating between two sets of bacteria, lactose fermenting and non lactose. So, CLAD is also doing the same thing. So, why we are not choosing these two players? We are going for CLAD. So, it is, it is a mainly a supportive uh, for all the organism. Uh, second thing, certain bacteria uh, which are very common in the urine sample, they grow on CLAD only. So, like that of your Staphylococcus saprophyticus. So uh, that is why for urine sample, the clad is being preferred. And what other questions they can ask? Now, when it comes the urine sample, they can ask about the processing of urine, like the urine sample, in uh, what instruction will you give to the patient for collecting the sample? That is midstream clean catch. Urine sample should be collected. Then what is, uh, when you are getting in the container, in the, uh, suppose a sample has reached to the lab, within what time it should be processed? Within half an hour. If the more time is being taken and you are not able to uh, inoculate the sample onto the plate, then you can keep in the, uh, with the boric acid that can be act as a preservative. So uh, now other questions, they are like it is urine, so they can ask about UTI, what is the most common uh, 
uh, UTI organism that is the Ischeracea coli. Then they can ask number of question on the UTI. What is upper UTI, lower UTI? What are the uh, difference between the two? What are the other organisms? What is significant bacteria that you should read? And uh, so basically they can ask about what is asymptomatic bacteria. So mainly you have to focus on the UTI. Now we uh, move to the next question, next spot that is the candle jar. So this you can identify it is a candle jar. So what is the purpose of this candle jar? Basically uh, certain organisms in which we demonstrate the alpha hemolysis or hemolysis, alpha or beta hemolysis. So uh, or there are certain bacteria which need 5 to 7 percent of CO2 to, for their better growth like these organisms are being called as capnophilic organism. So if you are identifying it as a candle jar, what is the use of this candle jar? Basically to provide 5 to 7 percent of carbon dioxide for which bacteria that are the capnophilic bacteria and the name of the capnophilic bacteria is Streptococcus pneumoniae. So Streptococcus pneumoniae shows what type of hemolysis? It is alpha hemolysis which is a partial hemolysis and there we see the greenish discoloration. So basically how we use this candle jar? So like you have inoculated sample on the blood agar plate and you keep this plate in the candle jar. Then you will take this candle and keep this candle over the plate and burn it. So and you cover the lid. So when you cover the lid, whatever oxygen is present in the candle jar that will be utilized by the burning candle. And after some time it will extinguish itself because there will be no oxygen left. And uh, because it is burning, so it is producing the CO2. So approximate we can consider 5 to 7 percent of CO2 will be produced here. And you will put like this only in the incubator. You will not open it. So that CO2 will be very useful for the organism if it is present in the sample. And also the hemolysis will be more demonstrable. You can easily notice the hemolysis. So that is the purpose of this candle jar. Then they can ask like you will go to the Septicus pneumonia. They can ask about what are the disease caused by this like it caused pneumonia. It can cause meningitis. If you are uttering the word pneumonia, they can ask about the pneumonia. If you are uttering the word meningitis, they can ask different type of meningitis or sample can be taken and uh, uh, they can ask for meningitis how much hour the sample is being kept, which plates are being used. So in meningitis when we are processing CSF sample, you have to keep it for 72 hours. So uh, that is different different rules are there. So basically we are going for 24 hours, but in uh, CSF we have to keep for 72 hours. So different questions can be there. Now we move to the next spot. So this is autoclave. You can easily identify it. So autoclave, uh, the pet question is the temperature pressure condition that is at 121 degree centigrade, 15 LB. You have to keep for 15 minutes. So that is there are three temperature being given, but most preferred is this 121 degree centigrade or 15 and for 15 minutes. Now, what is the principle of this autoclave? So that is the, it is based on the moist method of sterilization and it is a steam, saturated steam is being used for sterilization. What are the different materials which can be sterilized by this? So mainly where you have the, as I have said, moisture based, uh, it is a moist steam. So basically where there is uh, water is there, you cannot give dry heat there. So like in the media preparation, you need this autoclave. Then exceptions are there like for LGA you cannot autoclave it, you can go for the incipation. So this is how uh, they can ask the different question on autoclave also. In that they can ask, they can if it is going grand viva, so there they can ask for the hot air oven method also. So different method of installation can be asked. Now the next spot, this is the straight wire. So this is straight wire. Uh, what we are doing with this, uh, first of all, of what material it is being made. So it is made up of nichrome wire, which can uh, be resistant or you can say be a, a very high temperature of the flame because how we can sterilize. So another question, it is made up of nichrome wire. Then uh, how we can sterilize it? That is by the uh, red heat method. So directly on the flame, uh, you have to sterilize it till it is become red heat. So you can see it will, uh, its color will change to red color. 
so that means they have been sterilized what is the use of this straight wire basically when we are picking up a very small colony for making the gram stain or for inoculating into the like we are putting for the biochemical testing so there we can take this straight wire hair whenever you are processing with this for every uh, next step you have to sterilize it so that is a very important thing and whenever you are sterilizing, uh, sterilizing this straight wire or uh, next spot that is inoculating loop so uh, don't move it in the air to cool to cool it because it will uh, again bring some bacteria to this loops or wire so please whenever you are heating it keep it side and let it cool itself so that is the important thing now we come to the next spot this is your inoculating loop this is the most important loop wire loop that is being used in the bacteriology lab or in the microbiology lab so the same question will be of what material it is being made made it is of nichrome wire then this loop which you are making this has a particular diameter so according to need of your lab you can make it uh, this diameter the importance of this diameter width is very important when you are processing the urine sample because there we are giving the uh, significant bacteria that depends upon whatever uh, how much colonies we have get and after how much sample we have taken so the sample depends upon the diameter of this uh, loop so it is very important and uh, how you can sterilize it that is by the red heat method only and uh, uh, what is the use that is when you are inoculating the sample in on the plate or you are inoculating the biochemical testing you are making the gram stain so everywhere you can uh, use this inoculating loop now comes the next spot so these are the sterile surgical gloves so uh, important thing is if they are giving you these packed gloves packet is there you will say these are the sterile surgical gloves if the loose gloves have been kept uh, like this open gloves so you will say only the surgical gloves are there now what is the use of the surgical gloves that is uh, whatever lab procedures you are doing you have to wear these gloves if you are collecting the samples they are also in the pp this comes this gloves so they are in the labs you can use it most of the places so that you will not acquire any infection from the sample second question they can ask uh, that is how you can sterilize this especially the packed ones how you can uh, so whenever you have any packed material so that can be sterilized by the eto plant that is the ethylene oxide so there is a big plant of eto ethylene oxide gas and uh, because the temperature will remain when you are heating uh, in the e tube so the temperature will be remain of 45 to 50 so it will not harm any of the packed things so basically whenever you going for any plastic material sterilization or you for going any packed articles you go for the ethylene oxide that is the e tube plant now the next spot this is the you can see nitrile gloves now these nitrile gloves basically they are blue colored and they are, we are using these nitrile gloves in the molecular labs why we uh, prefer these gloves in the molecular lab because uh, these nitrile gloves are rna free and what do you mean by rna that is rna is an enzyme which break down the nucleic acid that is the ribocyclic nucleic acid so whenever we are processing any uh, virus or any uh, nucleic acid so there is chance because this rna enzyme is present everywhere in the environment on our hands in the lab so if we are processing with these hands or in that environment so your nucleic acid will break down degrade and you will not able to extract any of the nucleic acid which you want to amplify therefore whenever we are uh, performing or we are testing in the molecular lab we have to wear the nitrile gloves so that our nucleic acid does not uh, degrade or so uh, that is why uh, they are being preferred in the molecular lab so uh, this can be asked this important spot so that's for the today's video and if you have any doubt you can ask 
the all the questions are welcome and i always try to reply to all the question i hope so all the student must get advantage of this video and soon i will make on the other sports i will try to cover all the sport but uh, i can't make a long video because usually the student get bored of the long videos but i want that the student should pay whole attention to the video because they are basically for their benefit only thanking you